You know what's more confusing than trying to assemble IKEA furniture without the instructions? Understanding the cardiac cycle. But don't worry, I'm gonna help you put all the pieces together without any missing screws. <laughs> Man, that was corny. But you get the point, so let's do it. What's going on? Leslie Samuel here from Interactive Biology, where we're making biology fun. It's been a while. I missed you. Summer's over. School's in. So let's talk about the cardiac cycle. Now, what I'm not going to do is just throw this complicated graph at you and expect you to understand it. Instead, we're just going to stick to the basics and give you a strong foundation. First thing, let me tell you what the cardiac cycle is. The cardiac cycle is everything that happens from the beginning of one heartbeat to the beginning of the next. That's one entire heartbeat, one entire cycle, one full lub-dub. Now, why is the heart beating? Well, we gotta get the blood flowing throughout the body, and the heart is the organ that makes that happen. The blood gets oxygen from the lungs, it gets the nutrients from the digestive system, and it needs to take those important things throughout the body so that we can have what we need to thrive. Now, we gotta talk about the phases of the cardiac cycle, and there are different ways that you can break this down. I'm gonna start by breaking it into two concepts systole and diastole. Now, systole means contraction and diastole means relaxation. But before we go deeper into how these phases work together, I have something that can really help you solidify this information. I've put together a free cardiac cycle guide that breaks everything down in an easy to follow format. So if you wanna keep this handy for when you're studying or you just want a quick refresher, go ahead and grab it. The links are in the description below. All right, let's get back to how the heart keeps everything flowing. Let me explain this in the simplest way possible. Imagine that the heart is like a balloon. This balloon only has one chamber. It's one compartment. And let's say that we're using this balloon as a pump to pump water out. First, we have to fill it with water. And to do that, the balloon just kind of has to stay there and be filled. It just has to relax a little bit. So we're filling the balloon with water while the walls of the balloon are just chilling there, expanding as the water comes in. Then we gotta push the water out to get it to go wherever we need it to go. How do we do that? Well, we just squeeze the balloon. And by applying that force, the water gets pumped out. So again, to get the balloon to squirt the water out, we have to have both relaxation so that it gets filled and contraction so that it gets pumped out. Now let's look at the heart. The heart is a bit more complex than a simple balloon. In fact, it's a whole lot more complex. But the principle is the same. In the heart, we have four chambers. We have two atria and two ventricles. And when the blood first enters the heart, it enters via the two atria. And the first thing that's gonna happen in the cardiac cycle is the atria are gonna contract, AKA atrial systole. When the atria contract, what's gonna happen to the blood that was in the atria? Well, it's gonna get pumped into the ventricles. Now we have the ventricles full of blood, and now that we have the ventricles full of blood, the ventricles are gonna contract, AKA ventricular systole. So what's gonna happen when the ventricles contract? Well, the blood is gonna get pushed out of the ventricles. They're gonna get pumped out of the ventricles. And in the last phase of the cardiac cycle, we need the ventricles to just relax so that they can get filled with blood again. This makes perfect sense because we need the heart to get filled with blood again so that we can repeat the cycle and pump the blood out to where it needs to go. Now, if you were paying close attention, you might have noticed that something is still missing. We spoke about atrial systole, we spoke about ventricular systole, and we even spoke about ventricular diastole. But what about atrial diastole, atrial relaxation? I mean, don't they have to relax too? How else are they gonna fill back up with blood, right? Exactly, so here's the deal. Right after the atria contract, after atrial systole, they immediately start to relax, and this phase is called atrial diastole. And it's happening while the ventricles are busy doing their job. They're contracting and pushing blood out to the body. Think of it as the atria kind of catching their breath between sets at the gym while the ventricles are still working hard. Even though atrial diastole is crucial for filling the atria with blood, it often doesn't get the spotlight because the ventricles are doing the heavy lifting during this time, making sure that the blood is getting where it needs to go. 
But remember, without that quick relaxation phase, the atria wouldn't be ready for the next round of pumping iron. Well, I mean, pumping blood. Now, before we bring this all together in the most concise way as possible, I gotta let you know that this video was brought to you by Ecamm Live. The way I made this video, this biology video, is by using Ecamm Live. All of the clips that I brought in and all of the stuff that I brought on the screen is handled by Ecamm Live in a way that I don't have to add it during the edit, and that saves me a ton of time. So if you create videos or are looking for an easy way to make them look more professional and just awesome without having to do a bunch of editing, go to ecamm.com slash Leslie and use the coupon code Leslie. If you do that, it'll save you 15% off your first payment, which is always a good thing. All right, let's bring this home. If you understand what I'm about to say, then you've got the foundational stuff down. First off, the cardiac cycle is everything that happens from the beginning of one heartbeat to the beginning of the next. Once blood enters the heart, we start with atrial systole. The atria are gonna contract, pushing the blood into the ventricles. Now that the blood is in the ventricles, we will have ventricular systole, meaning the ventricles will contract. This pushes the blood out of the ventricles and essentially out of the heart to go where it needs to go. Lastly, we have diastole or relaxation. This allows for the heart to be refilled with blood so that we can start the cycle over again. If you got that, you're good. Now that was a basic overview of the cardiac cycle. But as I mentioned earlier, this was a simplified overview. It can get a bit more complicated. For example, the phases of ventricular systole and diastole can be broken down even further into multiple phases. And if you want to go a little deeper into that, check out this next video.